I, I want to ask you a question. Here, this is very important. Very important. Turn that off. It's very important. Do you know any knock knock jokes? No. That alone makes you want to smile, though. Just asking the question, though. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, I mean, I know a few. If I sit and think about them, but no, I, I don't got too many. Though. Okay. Do you have any jokes? You ain't got no jokes. I mean, you had no jokes even for your little brother. You ain't got no jokes. No, man, not really. I mean, I ain't too big on jokes. You know, I, I do more observational humor. Oh. You got some? Yeah, you got, I got both of those. Okay. <laughs> but my observational would get me in trouble, so I ain't saying them all. <laughs> <laughs> they come back to haunt me. My children know what they are because I say it in my house. Or, you know, they nearby, I can just whisper it in their ear. And they just turn around and look at me and go, like, don't show up at our wedding. <laughs> I'll be saying stuff that like I I have to I have to make sure I'm not doing red fox humor. That that means something to somebody like me that's almost sixty. So oh, yeah. uh, red fox humor gets you in trouble. So I had to I had to wash my brain and my and my mouth out. So I had to do them both. Uh so listen, you have uh you've opened up when I do the commercial breaks. There are, a, I take a little moment to talk to people that are talking to me because they know I'm taking a commercial break. So if they've been on the show, I mean, if they've been in the live, they know when I take a commercial break. So they want to tell me a few things that they've enjoyed. So they've enjoyed you immensely in that first segment. And they firmly believe that for some God awful reason that um, you should come back again. Now, I'd leave that up to you, but I just told people, you know, I'll talk with him about that. So instead of talking to you in private, I just wanted to put this out in the open for you to consider that possibility that the, the drawbridge is always down. And the the energy gates and doors are open for you to come back anytime. Uh, but you may not after this segment because I want to talk about some things that may make others uncomfortable. But. I don't know what you're about to say, but yeah, I'm coming back. <laughs> That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Well, one thing is for sure. I do want to talk about mental health that matters, and that's for everyone. Mental health does matter. Uh, but I do want to touch on uh, in the black community uh, things that uh, may you may or may not have noticed. Uh, I just wanted to bring it up because it's something that I haven't found someone to come on my show and discuss uh, with your, your experience as well as, as a background as a therapist. Um, I got uh, I got that uh, message uh, from you, uh, Darius. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on it, but you can feel free to jump in and expand a little bit more of what you're you're talking about the DM that you sent us, as you brought up in the first segment. Uh, your words, uh, Darius, to to both of us were, you you feel like a lot of black males or people. Uh, that you've experienced are functioning in the fight or flight. And you are asking us, uh, mainly my guest here, Aaron, uh, you are asking how do we reframe from constantly being in flight or, fr excuse me, flight or, excuse me, fight or flight. Uh, and how do you live your life without being in fight or flight mode uh, within the black community or as a black male. I give you first dibs on that. Okay. Well, for, I'm going to try to answer it the best as I can, because I think that fight or flights in some situations can be useful. Like it's supposed to protect us. It's our brain's response to danger. And when it, isn't doing his job is when you are not in a dangerous situation, but you're still in flight or flight mode. So I'll address that part of it. Okay. A lot of times when people, especially in, you know, in a black community, they're in a fight or flight mode when they shouldn't be, it's because they're trying to protect themselves from a perceived trauma. So what I mean by that is you are feeling like something bad or danger is imminent and mm -hmm. you're necessarily in that situation and your brain is trying to protect you even though it may not need to so in order to stop that 
and, it, and different things work for different people. But in general, I would say in order to stop that, you would have to understand what it is that your brain is trying to protect you for. It may, may, may or may not be something valid. If it is something valid, then your brain is doing the right job. But if it isn't something valid, ask yourself, why am I trying to protect myself from this situation? And when you do that, you start to formulate ideas, and then you end up putting yourself in a better position to not be in flight or fight, fight, fight or flight mode. So ask yourself, what is it that I'm in this fight or flight mode for? And if it's not something legitimate, really try to get down to the root of it. And when you get to the root of it, you start to come up with solutions. Getting to the root of it is often not the first step people want to make, right? That's that's a fact. You know, a lot of times we just accept our emotions, which you should accept them, but we don't necessarily scrutinize them and really try to figure out where is this emotion coming from, and it never goes away. We might stuff it down for the moment. We might forget about it for the moment, mm -hmm. but it all surfaces because we never really critically analyze it. So I think the more we learn to critically analyze our emotions, our thoughts, our fears and whatnot, the better position we get into to address them and resolve them. You got to resolve your traumas. They don't just go away. Because of that, a person can then begin to live their life living on an edge that doesn't, they live on a cliff that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. There may be moments that it does, but that's going to just pretty much validate them to continue stay in that fight or flight maybe even freeze mode. Yep. But in actuality, the overall life that they have, they don't need to live that way. Looking over their shoulder, second guessing. We can have bad experiences that can control us, traumatize us. But then we get back to what, the way we started the first segment with your first, first post, that the brain then is being affected by that trauma and it mm -hmm. can't move on. Yeah. If that's the case, how does that work within the black community? If a person has been mistreated, there's been an injustice mm -hmm. and their brain stays locked into that mode to expect it no matter where they go, even if it's not there. No, that's a really tough question. And, and like I say, with a lot of stuff, because it's the truth, there's no straightforward answer to that, you know, and I don't yeah. even have the answer to that. But for me, taking into the, our community, I think that we have to understand that the traumas that we experience as, as a community didn't just happen overnight. You know, these things are long standing. These are traumas that are generational. And it's not going to be an overnight fix to those problems. So we have to understand what is real danger and what's perceived danger, even as it comes to our community. And it's not necessarily helpful, in my opinion, to look at the trauma as necessarily let, let me rephrase that i think that in our community we have a lot of trauma and those traumas have a lot of layers right and in order for us to really be able to deal with those traumas we have to start peeling back some of the layers we have to really figure out where is this trauma coming from. And sometimes it's very obvious, you know, it's the police or it's the the robbers or whatever. But sometimes it's, it's not necessarily that straightforward, you know. And we got to really dig deep to understand what it is that's bringing these traumas about. Because that, that may start to that may start to show some stuff that we may not recognize they were the they were the cause. Mm -hmm. When we were pointing the cause at something else and we end up digging, unearthing some stuff that we weren't planning on seeing, let alone want to address. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and that can happen even within somebody's home, right? Or in a marriage. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a lot of the problems that people have in their home and in their marriage are based on people trying to compensate or trying to project their traumas onto other members. Like, like for example, if you are, in a marriage right and your wife mm -hmm. has trauma from her background that she's not dealing with a lot of times that trauma is going to come up in your relationship in very unobvious ways like she might have been cheated on back in third grade or whatever mm -hmm. right? Right, right right it might be something that you do that 
reminds her of that trauma and then automatically puts her in a fight or flight mode. So she she's in survival mode. You don't really understand what's going on. You just respond <laughs> to what she's doing. And that's a catch-22. Now y'all fighting about something when it's really a deep-rooted issue that's never been addressed. So a lot of times when people are knowledgeable about fight or flight, they're knowledgeable about their, tra their trauma, they're in a better position to do something about it. And you don't have these ongoing battles with your spouse or somebody in your household or somebody at your job or somebody right. at your Because you know exactly what it is that's triggering you at the moment. Now, that means somebody got to do the work. You kind of touched on that in, in the first segment. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of work you're talking about. Yeah, you got to yeah. So the unearthing, if they they have to unearth <laughs> third grade, I'm gonna go back to your third grade. That was pretty good. I'm gonna use that again somewhere on another show. I like that. <laughs> you got third grade issues, man. Why are you taking it out on me? I'm in the twelfth grade now. So <laughs> you make it on me. No, but I'm I'm just saying that's what we talking about in a relationship, in the community of whether, as you said at the first part, whether it's Hispanic community, hand, uh, 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 dis, dis, disabled community, whatever it may be. We could end up taking something that happened. I'm sorry, third grade is cool. You need to hashtag that, man. I'm serious. You think I'm joking. That, you need to make a shirt that says that. And everybody that follows you will know what you're talking about. You go like, nah, they be in third grade right now. We in the 12th grade. We about to graduate. Don't be trying to hold me back. Don't be hold me back with that stuff. So I'm sorry. I got That was a tangent, everybody. If you watch the show, you know I have those. But anyhow, so they act in third grade and you over there trying to have a relationship thinking you both in the 12th grade. and yeah, and that happens a lot. You know, people that's crazy. Everybody is on the emotional grade, for lack of a better term, that they are. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, because of their trauma, they stuck at a certain level and they never really progressed past that level because the trauma keeps you stuck at certain points of your life. And it might not be wow. keeping you stuck in a in a complete totality. Like you might move on intellectually. You might move on physically. You might move on spiritually. You might move on as far as uh, just life experience in general. But emotionally, that trauma keeps you locked in. And, and until you resolve that issue, you can't move forward in your life. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that got daddy issues. That didn't happen overnight. That started. It didn't happen. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, it didn't happen overnight. I like that. That See, hashtag that one. Daddy issues not didn't happen overnight. You need to, It should be a book. You know what? That's an ebook for about 50, 55 pages. Okay, there you go. Nineteen ninety nine. There you go. The <laughs> ebook. Daddy issues didn't happen overnight. But now, oh man, we could do a show on that one. We just can't do it today. So, so um, you're looking at the screen there. You're getting some love. Uh, yeah. Black girls uh, getting in their shift. I, I hope I'm reading that right. Getting getting their shift together. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> while that's real talk, they're giving you props there. Uh, telling you to keep preaching. Um, uh, one B will uh, says bingo. Uh, somebody puts up here that about being stuck keeps us stuck. But when it comes to being stuck, you touched on that just a little bit here. When you say stuck, what does that mean to somebody just now embarking on their mental health? What does it mean to be stuck emotionally? How does that kind of play out so they know they go in the wrong direction and they need to to indulge in self-care and start working on themselves? I think we all get stuck at some point. And stuck don't necessarily mean that you always stuck at your third grade or, or you know, right, you, whatever. Senior, you might get stuck on something that happened last week and that affects your current state of mind. It affects your it. current moves, your current decisions. And a lot of times people don't realize they're stuck and they never get unstuck and they make decisions based on being stuck and those decisions springboard into other problems and other areas of their lives. You know, it, it, it always compounds, you know, okay. these problems because people think that because you're mentally on to something else, you, you think that you emotionally move. You never actually address that issue. I still got you. So, so uh, a person, so, I could be mentally like doing my job, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing what, you know, I'm brushing my teeth. I, I'm still functioning in my frontal lobe. Why are you laughing? You think I didn't brush my teeth today? I, I was teeth. laughing at one of the cops. <laughs> what, what, the good Krispy Kreme one? Yeah. 
<laughs> I know. I saw that too. I was trying to be serious. See, and you go back to it, but but that was a good one. They should hashtag that one. Good Krispy Kreme. That off the good. Okay. So uh, anyhow, uh, that means something to, to to us. Somebody's gonna rethink. Go like, I don't know why they laughing. I don't understand what they're talking about. Anyhow, so um, I could be moving throughout the day. You're saying, let's say it's me, mm-hmm. but if I've got some emotional un resolved issue emotionally i'm relatively i'm stunted i'm kind of i'm not able to bloom the way i should emotionally i enter a relationship with somebody and i'm looking like i got my stuff together until something reminds me of something else there you go that's it and if i've if i've never resolved it you're telling me i'm going to create some more how did you say it you said you just said it. it was a beautiful way you said You said, I will start making decisions in my stuck mode, which will perpetrate, as it were, more problems. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be so stuck in that frame of thinking, uh, that flight or fight fight mode, that you're going to be flighting or fighting when you (laughs) don't necessarily need to do Don't need to. You're so stuck in that way of thinking because you don't know that you have this unresolved trauma. It's not like a light bulb go off in your head and say, yeah problem but at the same time a lot of times we do know what our problem is but we ain't courageous enough to address it you know got it got it got it we would have to be courageous Absolutely. we'd have to be serious and be real and be courageous and go like let me address this but but see the a partner could be telling somebody hey look come on now <laughs> or she or he could be <laughs> looking up. i think you need to address something you know what's going on and that could be the out. That could be the out that will help us go down a path. But instead, if we're not courageous, if we're stuck in a fear mode, we may not want to see that part of us and really deal with it. Exactly. You know, and, and fear is really like, to me, fear is the cornerstone of our problems. I think we do everything that we, I think everything that we don't do in life is really revolving around fear. You know, I, I think okay, that, I go with that. Yeah, I, I can see that. In a lot of situations, tend to be what causes you to make these inefficient decisions, and yeah. a lot of your problems in life is rooted in fear. And I'm not necessarily talking about fear in a in a conventional sense. I just mean fear of failure. You know, fear of rejection. The consequences. Fear of the consequences. And fear of doing the work. You know what I mean? Like oh, that, yeah like a a tangible fear like oh somebody gonna beat me up or something like that like it's not like that yeah it's it's more of this evolutionary fear you know this this primitive fear in our brains that cause us to not endeavor to do more because we don't want to experience those negative emotions you know or we don't want to feel what's what's next maybe we don't want to we fear what's next once i do tackle this is that person going to like me that person not gonna like me. They're gonna see me be vulnerable. Will they appreciate it? Especially guys, whether black, purple, green, or or, or orange, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we can get to that point where that fear can make us believe, well, I'm gonna lose a part of my manhood or who I am or the way I'm perceived if I'm vulnerable, or I open up and say, hey, you know what? This really scares me. Us about to do this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were gonna say something. I'm gonna pull up something while you're talking there. And I think that that's a hundred percent true, especially as men. You know, I think as men, we are a lot more insecure than we care to admit. You know, hey, and- hold, wait, no, no, time out, no, nope, time out. <laughs> I always do this during the show, and everybody knows that. Me, time out for a second. <laughs> hey, this is why I can't get a man to come on the show because to, to say what you just said, they go like, "Nah, man, I can't talk like that." My wife will hear me. No, my girlfriend, nah, I can't be talking like that. No, no I'm serious. It's the truth. We more insecure than we we would like to admit, and I think that Bingo. that's a lot of problems. You know, we are stuck in this in this phase of our lives. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't yeah. really do the work. You know what I mean? It's hard well, to say you got some insecurities about the way you look, especially as a man. That's more acceptable from a woman. You know, but oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Validate men when they say that stuff. They look at you like you're crazy. You know what I yeah. mean? We as men, we have to challenge our insecurities and make it make it known and make it safe for other men to do those things. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, 
pumping blood to our biceps and triceps and pumping up blood into our chest and we we get big and everything that's one thing but some serious insecurities be be covered up man and you find you find more guys with a pudgy belly be be walk around just as secure emotionally more than the guy walk around with a ton of muscle <laughs> and can run up and can run the 440 fast and and he's just as well uh, tackling some of the things that need to be tackled being fearful can make a person stuck make, uh, did i say that right is that kind of what I got from what you just said, especially yep. men. Absolutely. We start making these stuck decisions, and I like you said, inefficient, inefficient decision. And, and uh, I got to, I got to go to your page, man. It, I, I, I know I can't keep you all day, but I got to go over a few of these before we end. Um, here we go. Uh, you have this posting that says, it, you kind of touched on this just a moment ago. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only potential power. It transforms itself into actual power the moment you decisively act on it. Ex expand on that some more. And by the way, everybody, thank you for your comments uh, talking about uh, the show and what we're talking about. Uh, but go ahead. You were going to say? Well, yeah, I think knowledge isn't power. We always hear people say knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And, and it's really not power, it's potential power, because if you don't utilize that knowledge, then it does nothing for you. It's just stored in your head. So mm -hmm. to me, the true power is actually doing something with that knowledge. You know, even if that's giving it to somebody else, or is it actually using it to make your life better? Right. Having to read a thousand books, but if you don't act on that knowledge, it means nothing. That's not power. You know, power is coming from doing certain things. So I want everybody to know that, you know, knowledge ain't power. You can know a lot of stuff, but if you ain't doing nothing with it, it doesn't matter. The same goes with the trauma or the unhealed emotional uh, trauma that we may go through that can keep us stuck. And we, we start making stuck decisions, trying to go forward with stuck decisions. It's not going to work. And if we have the knowledge about that and we don't, well, what you just said, we're not going to have that potential power unleashed in us emotionally to be mature emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the case, okay, if that's the case, then do me a huge favor. Okay. Tell me, tell me this. I'm, a, I'm just going to keep reading what you got here because it's, it's not, your postings are kind of like a book, dude. It's like chapters in each book. That's just me. That's just the way I look at it. Yeah. I, and then I know I can't keep you all day, so I gotta, I'm going to have to try to – I don't run through anything, so just bear with me. Okay. Here we go. You criticize you criticize yourself the way your parents criticized you. Mm -hmm. So a person can have knowledge that their parents criticized them, but if they don't use that knowledge the right way, they just turn around. The parents are not around. They should start doing the same thing the parents did to themselves in their own head, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and you criticize yourself the way your parents do because your parents are really the first people you meet in life. You know, those are your first authority figures. Those are your first people you really ever socialize with. So when you're a child and you're young and impressionable, you look for your parents for all the guidance you get when you step out to the real world. Like you look to your parents to inform you of who you are. So if mm -hmm. you're criticizing, telling you you're stupid, telling you dumb, telling you you're ugly, telling you, you can't do nothing right, you go out into the world and have that same mentality. So you start to criticize yourself based on what your parents was doing because yeah. that initial feedback and you didn't have any evidence otherwise to say, well, you know what they saying ain't true. You just going off of the first person to give you some type of feedback. That's why it's good for parents when they're young, they need to nurture healthy relationships with their kids so that when their kids step out into the real world, they're looking at the world from a perspective of healthy self views rather than the way their parents was criticized. And a healthy self view a person can get means that they, if they're living that way with a healthy self view, mm -hmm. they've probably done what you said here. A person needs to break the cycle today Absolutely. in that posting. You have that in the comments that a person has to literally make their decision to break the cycle. If yep. not, then that's going to cause more problems in their relationship. I'm going to read another one. You can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. Everybody has uh, heard and seen that. And then, of course, you say, read that again. You can't change the people around you, 
but you can change the people around you. Uh, you put here in the comments, read it well, and then you repeat it. In other words, you say, but you can remove yourself from them or the situation. You can't change the way people behave, but you can remove yourself from them or the situation. How does a person remove themselves from the situation? Well, that goes to what we were talking about in the first segment. Okay. Sometimes it's not necessarily feasible to move, remove yourself from certain people who are toxic. You know, but you can remove yourself emotionally from dealing with those people. Sometimes you can make a conscious decision to not choose to engage with these people when they're being toxic with you, you know. Yeah. Or you can, if, <laughs> if it's feasible, you can remove yourself from these people if you know what they're doing isn't good for your mental health. So, I mean, a real point of the post was to say that only person in life you have control over, at least complete control over, is mm -hmm. yourself. I can't control the way people see me. I can't respond <clears throat> to me. I can't control anything that other people do or think. I only can control my attitudes and my perspectives. So if I can't control these people, I can remove myself from them. And maybe that would give me what I need. And now we're talking about not overthinking it after you do it, right? A person can't sit there or let somebody else get in your head to make you think you got to come back into that situation. Yeah, for sure. You know, and a lot of people are going to try to do that. When you start doing stuff that's best for you, a mm. lot of times people try to talk you out of it because no, now they can't be, <laughs> be little in you. You're taking that security away from them. Okay, I like that part. Okay, so they're looking to bring you back in maybe to do what you just said, mm -hmm. belittle, belittle you, and they're feeding off of that. Yeah, that, that makes them feel powerful. Yeah, that got to stop. <laughs> that kind of stuff got to stop. <laughs> you be like, I, I'm not playing that game. I'm not mm -hmm. playing that game. So you got you got this here uh, be, uh, a little bit more before we, we, we have to go. Uh, you got to be mature enough to understand that you have some toxic traits too. It's yeah. not always the other person. I just want to know, did anybody want to try to beat you up after you posted this? So, mm -hmm. so, so I'm just... I'm like, oh, at least he acknowledging. <laughs> okay, so you got to be mature enough to understand that you have some toxic traits, too. It's not always the other person. Matter of fact, you wrote this in the comments. It ain't always everyone else. Taking an honest inventory of your issues will help you more than trying to blame others for your problem so when you posted that you didn't need to go into witness protection or nothing like that because people start telling you well no i'm perfect it's the, it's the narc it's the other person all the time that's uh, not a discussion now you're victim victim shaming and all that. you didn't get none of that no. what are we talk what are we talking about here what i'm talking about is it's not always everybody else sometimes the things that you bring to relationships and situations and friendships and work relationship sometimes it's you you know what i mean like it's not always someone else and if you can really identify what you're doing wrong be honest with yourself and, and make the adjustments you know one of i made a post not too long ago maybe a few months ago about fault versus responsibility people okay. all lose those two things fault and responsibility are two different things fault is the things that happen to you in life you know you, you, your husband cheats on you you know, uh, you grow up in a single parent household. That's not your fault. You're you're disabled. That's not your fault. Those things are fault. Whereas responsibility is, regardless of what happens, you got to own that because it's your life. Responsibility and fault are two different things. A lot of things may not be your fault that happen in life, but it's still your responsibility to deal with those things. So when you have these toxic relationships with people. Sometimes the circumstances that bring about the toxicness may be not your fault, but it's your responsibility to resolve it and make the best out of that situation. And when you do that, you empower yourself to make good decisions and have a better life. But as long as you're living in terms of fault, oh, this ain't my fault, they need to come around and fix, you will never thrive, you will never move on, you're going to remain stuck. So if you want to become unstuck, you got to start taking responsibility for stuff, whether it's your fault or not. 
And then that's when you empower yourself to live the type of life you want to live. Got it. Got it. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. When it comes to responsibility and a person taking on that, but not taking on per se the fault, mm -hmm. responsibility may mean how would that look? Let's say uh, uh, the mate uh, uh, committed adultery or cheated and was not faithful. Uh, let's say uh, the boss, you know, did something, but he's trying to blame it on you. How does a person take responsibility? but not shoulder the burden of the fault? Excellent question. Responsibility don't necessarily mean you're going to blame yourself. It just right. means you're going right. to be the one to resolve the problem. There Whatever you go. That situation, you don't, you don't have to blame yourself about everything that has to responsibility. Responsibility is to say, I'm not going to wait for someone else to resolve this issue emotionally for me. I'm going to be the one to do that. You know what I'm saying? My boss made me feel bad. I'm not going to wait for him to apologize to me so that I can feel good about myself. I'm going to do what I need to do to feel good about myself. If my husband or wife cheats on me, I'm not going to wait for them to apologize and show up at my doorstep with a dozen roses. I'm going to do what I need to do to make the best out of the situation. Responsibility is not about accepting blame. It's about accepting the, the the responsibility of fixing the situation, regardless of whose fault it is, regardless of what needs, you just got to figure something out. That becomes empowering, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Hey, 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 look at look at the screen, man. Look at the screen. <laughs> look at the screen. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a new hashtag. Yeah. You it, your new hashtag should be you better say it, Aaron. You better say it, Aaron. You better make a you better write a book. I'm giving you all this free marketing advice, man. You better make some money from it. I'm gonna be disappointed in you. Wait, 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 wait. That's not your fault. But that's not your fault. But that's your responsibility. <laughs> it's, not, it's touching a lot on that. So we'll, we'll, I like that. Two months where I'm at with it. Yeah, self validation is key. Is what we're getting on the screen uh, from Black Girls. Uh, I wish black girls, you got to tell me your name because I can't keep just saying black girls because you, you, you're going to chase away all the brown girls and the white girls and all the pink girls and, and purple girls and or so uh, just it, it, tell me your name if you can. But overall, what we're talking about now is making sure our mental health is our responsibility. Uh, <laughs> you see the screen? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, you better make some money off that. Somebody else going to take your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. That, thank you for hashtagging that. That's pretty good. Okay, so uh, we're talking about mental health, being responsible for our own mental health and not leaving it. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you, Ursula, for, for telling me that. I appreciate that. And you're always welcome uh, here on the show. But I've been saving these to be the last ones that we talk about before you go because you keep drinking that water. I don't want you passing up. I, I don't want you. <laughs> what, no, what'd you say? What? It's hot in here. I don't have the AC on. Oh, okay. Stay hydrated. Okay, well, we're gonna hurry up and get done because um, uh, you this is two live shows back to back for you, right? You did one yesterday, did mm -hmm. today, so you know that you know it kind of happens when you're a superstar, man. You kind of do, you know, you kind of like the LeBron of mental health. I'm trying to be, man. I, it really ain't even about me. It's about uh, I know. It's about increasing the awareness in the community. You know, I seen that that was something that needed to be done, and I was just. <laughs> actually in that position so who better to do it yourself? you know somebody yeah. got yeah i'll tell you what i i'm i'm, I'm gonna start this campaign i'm gonna start i'm gonna i'm gonna get some of the athletes and, and then i'm gonna get you on the show and we we could do uh all three of us be together give me a one or two athletes and we do we do we do one of these or we do a pre-recorded zoom together people, people may be hearing me say that and be laughing like how are you gonna do that i i got ways i got ways we we do a little form we do a little uh, a, a, an open discussion for them. Uh, I, now, I know many of you are going to try, and they may invite you, and they may snatch you from me, but just remember, it, it was my idea first. So just, <laughs> sorry, you know, I'm just, all right, so look, here we go. I got to read this to you. Uh, this this something you probably never going to remember that you posted. It was, it was, it's, it's, it's a very, very, you're not going to remember this. You did it four hours ago. <laughs> but here we go. You did this four hours ago, so you better remember what I'm about to read to you. It, uh, what, I, what it says is you become a more positive, peaceful, and harmonic person when you don't react to people that use you 
as a mirror for their own self-hate. You become a more positive, peaceful, and harmonic person when you don't react to people that use you as a mirror for their own self-hate. Mm -hmm. Now, you were not extensive in what you put in the comments because all you said was a three-letter word, Y-E-P. You just put yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like that. That's like something my dad would have said. And he go like, yep, because he was from Arkansas. And he just go like, yep, that's it. <laughs> I don't need to say nothing else. Would you like me to stand on that? Oh, big time, because we're going we gonna to close the show on this note. So I want you to expand on that for so what, everybody when it comes to mental health. So what I was saying is basically a point that I tend to make a lot on my page is that the things people do and say to you have nothing to do with you. Don't allow people to be a, a mirror of their own self-hate towards you you if somebody's talking bad about you or, or you know they're sabotaging something you got going on or wh whatever the case yeah. may be a lot of times that's them dealing with their internal issues more so than it has anything to do with you and you should never take those things personally and when i say don't take them personally i don't mean don't take it offense or whatever i mean don't take it personally in the sense of understand that they dealing with their own problems and they're projecting onto you. You know, if somebody always got something negative to say, it's it's likely that they feel negative about themselves and they feel powerful by saying certain things to you. They're trying to make yeah. them feel good. That's the only way they know how to do it. That's they fight or flight. That's the way they deal with it, you know? So you got to understand, you got to have a self-awareness to understand that this ain't about me. This is about you. You doing this for yourself. And whatever you got going on, I'm going to let you have that. I got to be confident in myself. I have to be self-aware to know that what you're saying about me is not me. That's you talking about yourself right now. Wow. Um, I kind of, I, I have to agree with Ursula right now. Because you can see the screen when she typed in there. Yeah. That was your mic drop. That was a mic drop for show. For show, for double show. For double show show. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Everybody, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, I'm done. I wrote so many notes down. I'm going to try my best to, to put them uh, together as show notes one of these days and uh, make a posting out of them. Uh, I truly appreciate you doing this. You're, you are a man of valor. Um, I know you may know what that word is, but I always like to say this to people when I say something. Look it up, but look at the synonym because your picture is right there. You're a man of valor, whether anybody's ever told you that. And when you look at the definition and the synonyms for the word valor, that is you, my friend. You, you are a man worth having as a neighbor, as a friend, and in any community uh, because none of us are perfect. But you recognize not only the strengths in others, but you also recognize, recognize the vulnerability in the, the areas in which you can grow in. And that only makes other people around you better. Whether they like you or not, whether they appreciate you or not, I appreciate you and like you on this show anytime, anytime. Okay, I have to agree with I just saw popped on the screen. You, okay, I, I think one of these, the synonyms for valor is gentleman. I could be mistaken, but you are a true gentleman. Mm -hmm. and, a, and, and a gentleman, uh, at least as my parents would say, a real gentleman, as my mom would say, a real gentleman can be told by two things. One, uh, his shoes are always clean. And two, he always treats you as if you're welcome in his presence. A true gentleman, you're always welcome in his presence. He welcomes you no matter who you are, whether you like him or not. He just doesn't tolerate no foolishness. <laughs> he, just don't, he just don't tolerate no foolishness. I appreciate you because you welcomed me by allowing me to have you on this show and you treated me with honor every step of the way till we actually had the show. Uh, so uh, I admire you uh, man to man, no skin color involved you can make any community you step into better because you're willing to get to know the people around you first and trying not to prejudge a situation. So thank you so much. I appreciate today. Yeah, I'll uh, this is, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's all I was saying. I appreciate it for sure. No, no. Yeah. I hope, I hope we'll be able to get a chance to do another show. But one thing I do know is this, when you get a chance uh, in the comments of the show, after I upload both of them, feel free to go in there because my my viewers are very interactive, so so they will talk to you. 
And if you have anything in the future going on, be on another show, this show, you will find it on my page. Just type it in the comments. If you're going to just consider it a billboard, my, my page. Uh, and just drop in if you're going to be on somebody else's show. You got another book coming out, anything like that. You're doing a world tour. You're hanging out with the, you know, with 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 uh, prime ministers and presidents. Just put anything in there that you may do. You're going to go back to Detroit and hang out different places. Uh, you're in Detroit, right? You're in Detroit, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for everything. Uh, I got to tell you what's on the screen. Uh, awesome job, gentlemen. Thank you. That's very kind of you, Ursula. I appreciate it. I love seeing black men showing each other love. Oh, uh, that's pretty good. But you know what? He, he, you know, he can't be on the Laker team, though, because he's in Michigan. <laughs> but you Magic Johnson fan, though? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, like, look at, I just don't like it when they playing against my Pistons. I was just going to say, yeah, well, you know, you, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people over here don't like the Pistons either because they Pistons kick, they kick matches behind. <laughs> yeah, so, so we want to uh, – they stop kissing each other in the, in the center of the court. Uh, I appreciate the support. Queen is what you wrote out to her. I, uh, I'm going to tag that. I appreciate everybody here today. Uh, man, we're out. We're out. Thank you very much, my friend. You take care. Hey, man, go outside and get some air and run around a little bit. Cool yourself off. I'll see you later. All right, bye.